Hello everybody. So ACL will be the first surgery you will be doing as an arthroscopic surgeon most of the time. So we will be focusing this talk on very basics on how to do an ACL surgery and how to specifically avoid pitfalls or complications while doing this basic procedure. Now, if you see uh, ACL, it's like a over insertion of the femur site that we are discussing today morning. So if there are two bundles, anterior bundle and the posterior ankle bundle and they are on the posterior most aspect and it's a little back as you, uh, much more back as you think on the femoral insertion. So this is a femur which is flexed in 90 degrees and you will see that this oval area is the area of insertion of the uh, ACL. Now the superior part of that is anterior middle bundle and Below that is the postulacral bundle. There is the lateral intercondylar ridge, which is also called as a resident ridge. Anybody know what why it is called as a resident ridge? Most commonly, when the beginner starts, they start the anterior ridge actually. So because this, so, so it is very important for all residents to localize this ridge because they don't have to go anterior. This is actually the uh, this is the anterior mark. You should not make your tunnel anterior to that. So anything posterior is fine. Because if you make it in the AM, if you make it in PL, it is fine. But you should not make in a zone which is anterior to the resident ridge. So ideally, the location should be in the anterior middle and posterior middle bundle both. If it is little down, that is okay. If you make it in PL bundle, it is still okay. But you should not make it anterior to the resident ridge. So, and the, there is a bifurcate ridge. Uh, in between, which separates the anterior middle bundle and the <coughs> So, if you see, there is a large area which is anterior to the ACL insertion which is bare, and this is the area where you should not make your ACL. So, most common mistake is in this area the tunnel is made, and that is a non anatomical position for an ACL tunnel, and any non anatomical tunnel will not clear that. So, if you see again, like this, this is the resident ridge, this is AM bundle, PM portal, like this. So, this is an area, this is a bare area which should be kept bare. You should not make any tunnel onto that bare area. On the tibia, again, uh, you have a AM and PL bundle, PL is little posterior, AM is little anterior. And as I told you, recently it has been uh, demonstrated as a arrow shaped uh, insertion on the tibia. Now implant. So there are many, many implants which are available. You can use interference screws. Uh, now interference screws have a lot of generations. So first basic screw was a metallic screw. Initially we used to use a stainless steel screw. The problem with acid screws is MRI non-compatibility. So most of the times now uh, acid screw is out of favor. We don't use an acid screw. If you want to use a metal screw, you should use a titanium screw because they are MRI compatible. Then the other generations are PLL screw, which is also called the bioabsorbable screw. At present, now these screws are out of fashion and they should not be used. Why? So they, they, there are case reports in which PLLA screws causes sterile reactions and the patient developed a lytic lesion along the tunnel and there are episodes of discharge also. So two of my own patients in which I have used this PLLS screw, I had this problem and patients came to me like say three years after the surgery, two years after the surgery with discharge coming from the TBL site. Now as a surgeon we are always worried about infection. Yeah. So we always send them for cultures, the cultures will come negative. The patient will not have any other uh, episode of uh, any other signs or findings or infection, but there will be discharge coming on. So on on examination and on MRI also there will be an infection like picture in the degree level. But when we go in, clear it out, it was all the screw which was lysed and it it, it makes a likely cavity uh, around the surrounding side of the screw. So two in my own patients I have seen this problem. Okay. And I have operated three to four more patients operated by the surgeon. So in my personal experience around, we I have seen six to seven cases of sterile reactions following a PLL screw. So this screw is now, I don't use it. So pure bioabsorbable screw is now not being used commonly and should not be used. The other 
advanced generation from PLLA is a, now what is called as a biocomposites group which is made by PLLA you can use either hydroxyapatite or beta -gacipi. so these are different different companies which are making this so this is now in so if you are want to use something mm -hmm. which is fancy try to use a biocomposites group and alongside there is another generation which is coming which is called as a peak screw peak is a bio inert material polyethylether ketone the advantage it is it's bio inert mri compatible and it is very rigid so it, it is uh, also temperature resistant so this is a very very strong material temperature resistant good tensile strength you get a good fixation but it will not absorb or integrate over the time as compared to a biocomposite that is the only difference otherwise fixation wise otherwise it is good it's a bio inner screw so if you want to remove it it will be removed as a normal screw later on it will also not be seen on the x-ray this biocomposite screw you will be able to visualize on the x-ray because they are basically based on beta dcp and hydroxide so they will be seen on the x-ray now these are all we have discussed so this we have discussed So now graph choices. So what is the preferred choice of the graph for ACL? So you can use most commonly an autograph, rarely autograph and synthetic. Synthetic you might have heard. Anybody of you have heard about the beer graft or beer procedure? So it's a very high procedure nowadays. It is coming in. All the past synthetic graphs which have been used in ACL have failed and failed visibly. So many carbon tapes and many uh, many synthetic graphs they use they were not successful allograft yes in some cases and in some centers allograft are used in big numbers and but autograft is the most commonly we use use here but for your information synthetic graft which is now into fashion most more mostly in states is a beer graft which is basically a acl repair additive so we'll come on to that later now the autograph the advantage is ease of availability, low adverse inflammatory reaction because it's body's own tissue, and you can you can uh, they revascularize and recolonize very fast. So uh, the most common graft which we use is a hamstring graft, and followed by the other grafts which we will discuss. Now this is the sequence of the graft which we use nowadays. Most commonly we are using a hamstring graft, followed by a peroneal tendon. Followed by a cordyceps, followed by a BTB, followed by a contralateral hamstring. So this is the sequence of the graph. If I want to harvest, I will harvest in this session, depending on the case that I am doing single ligament, multi ligament, poly ligament. This is what I will be doing. Uh, Peroneus is now upcoming, and the, in beginner's hand, actually, it is very good because technically it is easier to harvest than hamstring. The dissection is easier. The treatment is palpable. You can just nick over the area. Take the graph, there are no bands. That is that is good thing about the paralysis. But the negative is you need to take a consent from the patient that you need to take a graph from the ankle. Because this is an extra site that you need to operate. So if some patient may object that problem is in the knee, why are you operating my ankle? Yes. So then if you are using this, you need to take a consent. If you are using hamstring, BTB, quadriceps, you can take an intra-op decision, you can take graph whatever you want. But if you are user graft from the other side, like if you are using other knee or other ankle, you need to take a consent, special consent. So if you are using a peroneus, I strongly advise you to take a special consent and inform the patient that I will be taking a peroneus graft. For these two, three, you don't need a consent. It's a part of the procedure you are taking from their knee itself. Uh, now BTP tendon is basically the gold standard, old people do it, uh, the senior surgeons do it. It's a very good graft, very rigid. Very good fixation, bone to bone healing, very good. The only problem is donor side morbidity, anterior knee pain in some patients, and in some patients you will uh, have difficulty in hardware's patella fractures. So, donor side or donor side morbidity is the thing that is why that has made this very good graft less mobile. So, when I was a fellow, I was trained, my boss used to do BTV. He was a senior surgeon and he used to do only BTV. So, I was trained in BTV, and later on I adapted myself because of the practical reasons into a so it's a higher graft strength, stiffness, faster healing. Harvesting is issue, more time in the surgery, large scar and patella fractures and anterior pain. That is basically issue with this. So that's why 
not a preferred graph as a first nowadays. But yes, technically it's gold standard. You get a very good rigidity. It does not uh, sag or make loose over time. So that is very good. Now hamstring graft, as I told you, it's very good. Semi tendinosis and gracilis both can be harvested. Normally I use only hamstring in most of my cases, 90 percent. Very rarely, if the hamstring is uh, very semi is very thin, we might use a uh, uh, gracilis graft. And uh, in PCL, uh, very important innovation is a retro watch. So this is a device which will increase the accuracy of your femur tunnel. So this will actually give you the tunnel length at the first step of VP insertion and that will make your surgery very simple and predictable. So if you have a short tunnel, you can re-drill it, that is number one advantage and you can plan your surgery at the first step. So that is the other advantage. So this is a retro watch and this, this way we use it and this way we measure it. So as compared to the traditional anti-grade cross, this is very good and very much accurate also. So with this, the accuracy of your femoral length will be better as compared to an anti-grade. Because anti-grade sometimes you feel you are in the bone, sometimes you will be in the ITV, you don't know. So that is very important. So, so in this, if you are in the wrong trajectory, you can drill it and you can check it, you can change it. Supposedly, if your tunnel length is less than 30, you can re it to actually achieve a good tunnel length. So this is a very good thing that you should have in your abnormal It reduces the errors in femoral tunnel placement and it ensures you have a good length of the femoral tunnel. Plus, it is precise so you can make your measurements if you are using a fixed loop button or using the adjustable loop button. And then in some cases, you can see that there is a ACL repair that we do typically in Sharman one. So primary repair is one thing that we are discussing. So in femoral avulsions, we can do a primary repair which, in, which preserves the normal anatomy and preserves the proprioception. Now internal bracing is one thing which is debatable. So some people say you do it, some people say you don't do it. Basically it's a tape which is added onto the graft and it acts like a seat bed and it prevents the late laxity of the uh, graft and it also has a seat bed effect. So if the, there is an injury to the graft, it will injure, the tape will break first and then there will be load on the ligament per se. So that is good and this is how we do it. This is how we do the uh, ACL repair. This is the internal bracing after the ACL repair. This is how the ACL will look after the primary repair of the ACL with an internal brace. The stump augmentation, we have seen two surgeries today. So you can do stump augmentation by two ways. You can add the stump to the graft or you can just add the stump to the bone. So both of these techniques are there. And it is good. So you, as much as possible, nowadays you should try to augment the stump. Associate lesion, if you have a root or ramp lesion, you must address those lesions. This is root repair jig. This is how we do a root repair. This is the root fix anchor which is used to repair the root. Thank you. Thank you.